Being a curious child, eons ago, I checked the meaning of my name, Jennifer. It means white wave. To my young mind, white wave seemed like a name for a Native American child, like big cloud or little cloud. Yet, many girls of my generation have Yuan or cloud in their names. Guess parents have lofty cloud nine aspirations for their children. Why did my parents name me thus? Waves are quite far from clouds after all. When asked, my mother replied that she was an ardent fan of Jennifer Jones, an actress. Hence, I was given Miss Jones' first name. I was inadvertently keeping up with the Joneses. My grandmother couldn't pronounce Jennifer and called me Elephant as it was the closest to my three-syllabic name she could master. This probably explains my strong sense of affinity with these mammals of grandeur, but mainly with the clumsiness usually yet wrongly ascribed to them. I'd like to think, though, that I'm gifted with an elephantine memory. During secondary school, my classmate Caroline nicknamed me Jellyfish because she thought Jennifer the Jellyfish sounded cute. I called her Carrot. The nickname stuck, though so we lost contact. Jellyfish went on to make many new friends, including Eggy and Winnie the Pooh. When Carrot and Jellyfish finally reconnected after four decades, it was amazing that we could still seamlessly revert to our crazy adolescent selves. As with many Singaporeans of Chinese descent, I have a Chinese name comprising two words, Bi Ling, which means beautiful greenish jade. It sounds like pigling in English, which was assumed to be synonymous with piglet, the young of a pig, because duckling is the young of a duck. I may legally own the name. People may use it, but I forget the piglin part of me. Once, when the polyclinic staff called Liang Piglin to enter the consultation room, a full minute elapsed before I jumped up and sheepishly admitted, yes, that would be me. Couldn't fault her for her distrust when she boomed to see my identity card. Did I look like a pigling? I never quite had the beautiful pink complexion of a pigling. I was scrawny as a child, so thankfully, association with piglings was rather tenuous and therefore did not pose serious bullying risks. I can hardly be called a pigling or a young anything at my age now, although I had blossomed into a more substantial size and eating is currently one of my indulgences. At home, my nickname was derived from the Hakka dialect pronunciation of beep, which sounds like beep. As was the tradition in many Singaporean Chinese households, I shared one of my two Chinese names with my cousins. Lin was the shared name among all the females of my generation on my paternal grandfather's side. That made beep or beep ostensibly mine and mine alone. In the Chinese and Malay languages, repetition of words occurs quite often. So I was called beep beep at home. I remember my grandmother's voice uttering, beep beep, the Choi Nai De! Beep beep, where are you? Just like the Roadrunner cartoon. Again, there was hardly anything in common between Roadrunner and me. I was not a fast runner, but Beep beep, sounding like a car honking, justified my impatient natural self. And impatience could well have been my middle name. Fast forward to when I could and did give my three children short names of four letters each. I'm thankful that my husband and parents-in-law had given me their prior blessing to name the children. I had never believed in the practice of, blossom, of bestowing names based on birth date and time. 
I gave my children Chinese names which have the same number of bihua or strokes. They share a gender-neutral Chinese middle name. Equality rules in my household. Like the tiger mom, all their nicknames are animals. My tiger mom worldview pigeonholed their lives neatly into three silos, topped with nine to five jobs. The gig economy was an alien intrusion. Then, COVID-19 put paid to my silos, substituting them with a new perspective that such jobs may not even be essential or secure either. As oft said, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. My husband works with his hands a lot. Working with their hands is probably in their genes. The seed for my own foray into sewing was sown two weeks before one of my daughter's kindergarten graduation time. Mummy, have you bought my off-shoulder um, off graduation gown yet? I went to Robinson's Kitty Palace but didn't buy. Why? If the off-shoulder part fits you, the skirt is too short. If the skirt is long enough, the off-shoulder top part is too big. Oh, really? I want a princessy dress like Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Like her off-shoulder yellow gown in Beauty and the Beast. I also like the puffy skirt. So how? I'll think of a way. Tailoring is very expensive. I will try and sew it. Reality hit. I was working overtime at the office. My last brush with sewing was in secondary school and I didn't even have a sewing machine. Throw into the mix the looming deadline of the graduation ceremony and I was poised for failure. I moved fast, purchased the sewing machine and attendant paraphernalia. Acquisition of the cloth was accomplished one afternoon on Arab Street. I bought $70 worth of white scalloped aged lace and cotton material. It wasn't a small sum. Alas, my attempted frugality was ripening into futility. Sewing on layers of cloth to precise measurements was not for the inexperienced nor the faint-hearted. The layers found ways of holding clandestine meetings at the oddest places. Other than my husband and daughter, my daughter's kindergarten Lao Shi, Chinese language teacher, was a staunch supporter during the two weeks of frenzied sewing. Did I succeed? Against all odds, yes! Ironically, my legendary cooking catastrophes, even with the easiest of recipes, helped because I had failed at following the perfect recipe for disaster. Everyone at kindergarten was impressed, probably because it was the only home sewn outfit and Lao Shi had been excitedly garnering support for my undertaking. My daughter was very proud of my achievement and of her mummy. It dawned on me that if a less than novice tailor could somehow conjure a decent looking dress, what more with God, the master tailor, in orchestrating the tapestry of my life. On my part, I just need to keep sowing and sowing seeds of hope. My three seedlings, also known as my children, in turn have been tangibly growing my collection of memories. My stuffed toys are predominantly pink, a subconscious yet visible nod to my piggling ties. The two pink aquatic invertebrates were handcrafted from scratch by my daughters. The elephant was a gift from my son. I was recently promoted to royal status with this crowning glory from my daughter and son-in-law. One of my offspring embroidered the pencil case with sotong octopus and jellyfish. She also transformed the ceramic tile into a coaster of a jellyfish in turquoise waters. 
Additionally, I get to enjoy the fruits of my son's labour in the kitchen. My first name rhymes with what I do for a living. It is easy for clients to remember Jennifer the lawyer. It also rhymes with some of my other roles, daughter, sister, mother and jester. During my free time, while merrily waving my jellyfish tentacles in my habitat of greenish jade-coloured waters, I know that my seedlings are flourishing on terra firma, firm ground. Yeah.